Uh, yeah, this is Dave from TwoBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is a WZ-111. Uh, this is a Chinese Tier 8 heavy tank, and the map is Serene Coast. Uh, this game has all the hallmarks of the decline of civilization. You're going to see panic and chaos. You're going to see suicides. Uh, the, the enemy is going to just fall apart. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive straight to the enemy base. It's going to cause a lot of problems for the enemy team. They're going to try to stop us, but they're going to do too little too late. And we're just going to clean up on them. So now the first thing that I'm doing by by taking this position, it's showing my allies that it's safe to be where I am. So the allies that I have, such as the KV-4 and the M41, they're going to come with me. And we're, we're going to head in the direction of the enemy base. The enemy team is going to be concerned about what's going on in the middle, overly concerned. They're going to withdraw their forces from the flanks, which are on the west side and the east side, and it's going to allow us to... It's going to allow us to, to, to kill their tanks one by one. So basically we're going to keep on advancing. We're going to go to the base. Uh, we're going to find the uh, FV-4202 um, whimpering and cowering. Uh, we're going to finish him off. And then we're going to begin the process of hunting down his friends. Now if you notice, on the east side, they never really advanced. The, the enemy team, if you look at the mini-map on the east side, uh, for example, you've got the Tortoise and the WZ-111, the Tiger II, the Yag Tiger, they're just going to fall apart. They're not going to advance on that side. And on the west side, they're all going to withdraw. They're going to withdraw from their from their current positions, and they're going to go basically to the area where I am right now. And it's going to make them very vulnerable. So the FV-4202 is cowering here. And because there's a lack of opposition here, uh, we're pretty much free to go where we want. If you, if you watch the minimap, you can see that on the northwest side, our team is pushing forward, and the enemy is starting to head in the direction of the KV-4. So we've got now the M41 and the Tortoise, which have withdrawn to come back towards the base area. The WZ-111 is going to also withdraw as to which tank is going to suicide you'll find out in a moment <laughs> Enemy it's six to zero it shows you the danger of leaving any of your flanks open in this case it was the center the middle flank if you look at the mini map uh, you can see that the RU-251, the Panther 8.8, the AMX-1375, and the Tortoise, they're not completely surrounded, but essentially they are surrounded. Very bad position for them. So there's the Tiger too. Now in this case, you had the E-75 and the WZ-111, the Tiger II, and another tank, which I believe was the Yag Tiger 8.8. They were on the east side, and the Tortoise at one time was on the east side. But now, the only tank on the east side flank is the E-75. Scores 9 to 2. And you can see the WZ is actually uh, showing a position that perhaps he wants to head back to protect the base. I guess not. Enemy is hit. 
And I am on full health, so I have a severe advantage. I'm trying to turn my frontal armor towards him as much as possible. And get behind him. So the E-75 is now gone. Scores 14 to 4. And the last remaining tank is a Type 4 Heavy in the south of the map. Why is he there? I don't know. But this is a perfect example of how the team failed to protect its flanks and did not react properly when their flank was exposed. Yeah, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is the E-25. This is a German Tier 7 tank destroyer, and the map is Erlenberg. I am going to get uh, three kills, and I'm going to do 2,000 damage. It is an assault defend game, and unfortunately, the enemy team is very predictable, uh, so it's very easy to find a route where you can safely go through enemy territory, get behind them, and shoot them from behind. Usually it's very safe to make it to this area where the bridge is. Uh, the skill comes in in uh, being able to go even further without being detected. You can see I was able to shoot at that tank and they didn't even spot me. So, when the enemy team is going to be coming on both sides, you want to stay as close to the river as possible. And you never know what you're going to encounter. You might encounter a slow tank, uh, the slow heavy tanks, the... I see a lot of Tigers, T-95. Never spotted me. And he's dead. It's one kill. Ideally, you want to go further back, uh, kill the artillery, which they're easy targets and stay as close to the red line as possible. Seems to be a lot more enemy tanks on the west side. Our team is doing well on the east side, so they don't need my help. Get close to that red line. Stay in the low areas when you want to hide. Go to the higher areas when you want to spot. The enemy team is not advancing on the west side. Very poor strategy for them. Target acquired. Enemy is hit. Penetration. Enemy armor is destroyed. Gotta watch those guns. Penetration. Penetration. Gotcha. When you're shooting at artillery, you want to make sure their gun's not pointing at you. Stay in the low area for for the best protection. Now you can see that my team on the west side is starting to advance. And we are surrounding the enemy. Uh, yeah, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is the T-34-3. Uh, this is a Chinese Tier 8 medium tank. And the map is Pilsen. There's a lot of people that don't like these tanks, and they're not the greatest tank. However, I did find a use for them, and they're good for hit-and-run style tactics. You need to get the, the stabilizers and the gun laying drives, because the gun handling is not very good. They're kind of difficult to drive, but they are actually pretty fast, and they're small. And if you can get close to the enemy and blast them and run away, uh, you can go somewhere 
uh, you can get something useful out of these tanks. So what I'm doing is I'm advancing uh, as undetected as possible. I'm going to go through these doors and I'm going to run behind some enemy tanks and just blast them and then run away. If you look at the mini-map, you can see that I am coming up behind the enemy. And here's the first victim right here. And they're too busy to, to really care. Now obviously it would have been better to go after that scorpion. But by the time he turned his gun around, I was already gone, so... When they show you the side armor like that, it's best to throw a high explosive round at them. Unfortunately, I had two bad shots there. But look at how they're playing. They have no idea what's going on. Aye! So I'm pretty safe behind the enemy territory. Oh, another bad shot. See, these tanks are not that good for uh, for aiming. Now that was a high explosive round, as far as I know, which is why it didn't do enough damage. Okay, so that was a game, but it showed you how it's possible to get through Pilsen and get behind the enemy team and shoot them from behind. Yeah, hello, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is the STA-2. This is a Japanese Tier 8 medium tank, and the map is Ruinburg in encounter mode. Uh, this is obviously a game in progress. If you look on the mini-map, you can see that I'm headed... Uh, to surround the enemy on the rear. So basically, I, we've got the enemy surrounded. right next to that guy and it shows you how easily you can turn the tide of the game now one thing that I would do differently now is instead of coming out this way, you're vulnerable along the central road. But if I had gone more in this direction, I would have been protected by all these buildings, and I still would have been able to shoot at that tank. Uh, but that shows you a, a little flanking maneuver. You should flank whenever possible in the game. It really, really can turn a stalemate into a winning game. Uh, yeah, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is the Cromwell B. This is a British Tier 6 medium tank. And the map is Sand River. I am going to get three kills. I'm going to do 2,600 damage and 1,300 EXP. Now, this is an assault defend uh, match. And it used to be different uh, when I first started many years ago. But lately, the east side is usually undefended. And... The assaulting team often attacks on the east side, and they used to often assault on the west side, but now they never assault on the west side. So the gameplay has changed a lot, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the spawns were moved around. Enemy armor is damaged. You can 
see these guys. If you look at where they are on the mini-map... You can see that they were in a, a rather vulnerable position. But some of them did make it through. This is an old replay, so it's possible that uh, there might be some bugs that, that cause a tank. Uh, there were bugs that caused a tank to not appear in the replay, which is why it said the message about penetration, but you didn't see the tank. Now, one of the reasons why I often like to come out here is to encourage my teammates to come out here. So we got a Tiger and a T-32 that came over to the east side, which they might not have done if they didn't have uh, someone else uh, advancing for them. On this particular game, they are advancing on the west side. And unfortunately, it makes them very vulnerable if the defending team takes up a location uh, similar to where I am, because from here, I'd be able to hit a lot of those tanks. Now you can see this is a rather safe location as long as you don't get spotted. You've got to be very careful about how high you go. Okay, so I was finally spotted, and obviously the safe thing to do is just to go to the other side of the hill. But you can see that the, the enemy team, um, they have a space that I can pass through that allows me to go behind their lines. You can see I was trying to ram him, trying to outrun his gun. Uh, usually tank destroyers, uh, it takes them longer for their gun to come around, so they're easier to outrun. He got away. So I got one kill and I got 21 hit points. The score is 10 to 6. So you'll notice that the enemy really only showed up on the west side. And uh, the tanks that did, a lot of them are dead. They only have a few tanks left. And I used to believe that when you're on the defending team, you should just stay back and defend. However, I'm a much better player now. And because I'm a better player, uh, I do go out uh, when the enemy team is assaulting, and I try to find ways to put pressure on them, make it a lot more difficult for them to... Uh, to win the game. And a lot of it has to do with knowing and predicting what the enemy will do. Uh, so the problem that the game has is that the enemy can be very predictable. And because they're predictable, you can find the gaps in their offense or their defense and exploit it and that's what I usually do. So I got two kills. This 
spotted the guy, and this is the type of case where you want to get in a position where his gun is not pointing at you. And there's lots of ways to do it. And, and uh, over time, I'm always going to win in a, a battle like this. However he's pointing the gun, you just go the other way. So I'm watching where he's aiming. I'm trying to spot him. And see what he's doing? And I got him on the auto aim. Now there I made a mistake. I should have probably gotten closer to him. Uh, but it shows you that if you're patient and you watch uh, what's going on, uh, this is why auto aim is important. You want to have a good view of what's going on in order to uh, to find a way to get at him. The artillery hasn't shot at him yet. That's the game. Uh, yeah, this is Dave from cheapbooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is the Oni. This is a Japanese Tier 7 heavy tank, and the map is Sand River. Uh, this is actually a great tank. I love playing this tank. Uh, this uh, is an assault defend game, and you can see I spawned on the west side. Uh, the game is from quite a while ago, over a year ago, uh, which is why the map might look a little bit different. A very powerful tank, uh, has great armor. Most most of these games, the enemy attacks on the east side, and you can see that our team is mostly on the west side or in the center, and that we don't have really good coverage on the east side. And we've got uh, a player who's uh, reminding the team to play on the east side. So now we have an idea of where the enemy, the uh, enemy heavy tanks are coming in, obviously on the east side. And we only have a Lux to defend against them. There is artillery in this game, so when you play, uh, you have to be aware of the artillery and you have to make sure that you uh, keep your tank safe and protected. So now what I've done is I've gone into a oh, there's the RD. gone into a lower level, uh, which is the river. And again, it may be a little bit different in the current version, but what you can see is that our entire team is starting to advance on the west side. And one of the rules that I have when you are playing is that if you're a fast tank don't worry too much about your field coverage you know go wherever you want to go but if you're a slow tank in general you always want to make sure you can defend your cap so if you look at the mini map and keep an eye as to what's going on you can see that at least half of our team is in the northern territory at this time
So we just had our first and second casualty. And now we control the west side of the map, and the enemy team controls the east side of the map. very important that you know what to do immediately. You don't want to take too much time. You don't want to waste time uh, in the north, so it really is time to start heading back south. Like, if you look in the northwest corner, you see that there's a Churchill. That's not a good position for a Churchill. Churchill is not a fast enough tank. The Churchill might be out for the rest of the game, because he's just simply too far away. Is hit. Score is 9 to 4. Target lost. So we're getting to the point where we're kind of surrounding the enemy team. They're all in one small location. We're finishing them off. Score is 11 to 5. Uh, I did miss a lot of the uh, core action against the heavy tanks. However, it, it shows you how you can easily overrun the enemy, surround them, pick them off one by one, uh, just by taking advantage of the fact that the way they play is very predictable, going through the gaps, uh, taking advantage of speed when you can. So it looks like we've got two tanks and an SPG. And they're pretty much over. I mean, they're in, a, in any moment now, these tanks are going to be gone. Sayonara. You'll notice how I turn my tank when I, in order to keep the gun pointed at the enemy. Okay, so the score is 14 to 7. There's one SPG left. Uh, but it shows you that we dominated in the game.